Here we are. Welcome, welcome. Episode six. Episode six. Episode six. Episode six. Of the Horse Lick Review. We've got a sit-in, last-minute guest with us. Magic Mike. How you doing today, Mike? Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good. I, d- I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> uh, That's a really bad statement. Jake, how are you today? I feel like shit. feel like shit. Well, I also disagree. <laughs> I'm doing okay. This will be our uh, last episode of November 2023. Okay, who wants to start? You can, man. I'm going to start? Okay, first I'm just going to start off with, when I was searching for articles, I noticed there's been a lot of animals escaping stories. There was one... What do they know that we don't? I don't know. One is like this yearling moose, which I don't know the whole big... I didn't really look big into this story, but yearling bull moose. I just pulled it back up because I'd seen it earlier. Escaped... Um, With the aid of... Wildlife Center. Squirrel sidekick? Yeah, probably. Flying squirrel. Wearing a pilot's hat. But, yeah... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure they caught him. I didn't really get into that story, but also in, uh, I think it's called Lattice Poli, Italy, near Rome. A, a circus lion, full-size male circus lion, escaped the circus, and they had film of it walking down the street, down the middle of the street in Rome. Just, I mean, just gigantic. Fucking lion. Went in Rome on a on a quest for vengeance. Went in Rome on a quest for vengeance to maul the Catholic priest that molested him as a cub. Exactly. And like Michael said, when in Rome. Rome. Let your tiger roam. Let your let your lion roam. Apparently. And then in West Orange, New Jersey, which I was informed is funny because it's like city. It's very much city from what Biz was telling me. Um they're uh Turkey, I guess for it's like their Thanksgiving mascot. His name's Turkeyles. Uh, <laughs> he escaped and was missing for weeks, and the entire city like came together to search for him because he's like such like an icon there, I guess. And uh, so, yeah. yeah, it took him like two weeks or so to find him. They finally found him. He was just roaming the city right after fighting that lion in Rome because he had to slay it like, yeah. as one of his nine labors. <laughs> The nine labors of Turkeyles. The nine labors of Turkeyles, <laughs> which six of them were just eating corn. Where the fuck is it? Seven labors? I don't remember, dude. Well, like I said, I still six nine. of them were Doesn't just matter. eating He's corn. A turkey. One labor is <laughs> impressive. Okay, go ahead. What you got? I've got a story about bat dicks. Nice from Sky News. Serotine bats use penises in bizarre way during sex. Scientists say. That's your cue, Michael. I I disagree. disagree. (laughs) (laughs) The serotine bat, which has a penis about seven times longer than its partner's vagina, appears to use it to push to push female tail sheaths out of the way. So essentially, I guess they have a tail sheath and they use their dick to just bat it away. Michael, you have a tail sheath, don't you? Oh yeah. The animal also has a heart-shaped head that is seven times wider than the vaginal opening. The size and the shape, in theory, makes penetration impossible. However, well, I disagree with that. I disagree. Should I disagree? Apparently, they reproduce. Yeah. However, the researchers say the bats use their oversized penises like an extra arm to push the female's tail sheath out of the just, way. Why don't the bats just fucking sit here and brag about how big their fucking dicks are? <laughs> they yeah. do. That's what they're screaming about it's at like, night. Fuck, fuck you, bat. The unique use of the appendage allows the bats to engage in contact mating. Isn't that all mating? Well, I mean, just by definition. Yeah. No, I fling. I eat my. Do skeet. they do it? In, do they? I do... eat my skeet at fucking chicks. <laughs> do they do it in the air? Uh, well, maybe we'll find out. I'm pretty sure they do, though, man. A behavior more commonly seen in how birds reproduce. Uh, let's see. First author Nicholas Faisal said. By chance, we had observed that these bats have disproportionately long penises, and we were always wondering, how does that work? How does that work when your penis is twice as long as the rest of your body? When you can use it as a weapon. We thought maybe it was like the dog, where the penis engorges after penetration. So the th- Man, they know a lot about animal dicks. That's a little suspect here. 
So they're locked together. Alternatively, maybe they just couldn't put it inside. But that type of copulation hasn't been reported in mammals until now. Until now. The researchers observed, jacked off too, the unique mating ritual with cameras placed behind a grid the bats could climb on. Their studies found that during mating, the male bats grasped their partners by the nape and moved their pelvises in probing fashion until they made contact with the female. This just sounds like sex. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's, yeah, it's just a lot of detailed <laughs> sex talk. At this point, they remained still and held the females in a long embrace. These Aww. lasted some 53 minutes on average. Look at the stamina on bats, dude. With the longest incident stretching to 12.7 hours. And then they just, But they embrace each other. They, <laughs> it's just like true bat love. Or they're just stuck together because his giant dick is lodged in her tiny vagina. After mating, the researchers <laughs> observed the bat's abdomens appeared wet, suggesting the presence of semen. Further research is needed to confirm that sperm was transferred during events. Who wrote this? Somebody just, I disagree. <laughs> somebody just snatching bats out of the sky. Is that bat cum? I that's bat cum. That's bat cum. It's definitely wet. That's semen. The researchers suggested that male bat, the male bats may have involved their oversized penises in order to push aside the female bat's tail membranes, which females use to avoid sex. Well, they don't like it. Just like a lady. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Faisal suggested bats use their tail membranes for flying and to capture the insects, and female bats also use them to cover their lower parts and protect themselves from males, but the males can then <laughs> use the big penises the to the overcome the tail membrane and reach the vulva. <laughs> The researchers collaborated with the Bat Rehabilitation Center, what, to get them to stop raping the females? What's going on here? In Ukraine, which filmed matching pairs, and with Jan Juker, a bat, enthousi- a bat enthusiast, and citizen scientists who filmed hours of footage. <laughs> so local creep whacking it to bats. Oh, yeah. Recruited by scientists. Uh, he was re- he was recruited apparently because he's a citizen scientist. I guess he's like they're with. like he's not this a real is scientist. the only <laughs> this is the only guy we're gonna find that's gonna sit there that long and watch he these. He filmed bats hours fight. of footage of serotine bats <laughs> hours. in a church attic in the Netherlands. <laughs> that just sounds like a real weird masturbatory ritual. He, I wonder if he was there if we. Or if he, if he just set the camera up, or if he was present the whole time. I'm sure he was present for part of it, at least like five minutes at a time. Yeah. You know, then he had a Gatorade, and then he came back. <laughs> all, all together, the team analyzed 97 mating events, 93 from the Dutch Church, and four from the Ukrainian Bat Rehabilitation Center. The findings are published published in the current biology journal. And that's all you need to know about bat dicks for now. Yeah. Is that the new Very educational. Dick? Huh? Don't look now, it comes bat dick. <laughs> his penis is seven times larger than his girlfriend's <laughs> vagina. <laughs> All right, here's my next, which uh, it's kind of scary because I know, Michael, you've at least seen some of it. Jake, you've probably seen it, but the movie Train to Busan. I don't think I have seen that. It's a actually. Korean zombie movie. Oh, it's, maybe It's a I badass. Have. If you have seen, haven't seen it, you need to watch it. It's a really good zombie flick. I disagree. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd say it's pretty good. <laughs> but... um. It's scary because that's kind of how this that story starts in Korea. This is huge bat penises? No, 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 no. The crunk, uh, in the, <laughs> So, apparently, there is this uh, disease among deer. It's been going on for a while now called the chronic wasting disease. Oh, yeah, I'm aware of that. Zombie deer? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they just, um, in the Yellowstone National Forest, they discovered that it is now spreading there. And they found that they had actually tagged this deer, like, oh, when was it? Uh, they tagged it, like, back in March, I think. And they found it um, dead in October. It died from the wasting disease. And uh, so now they know it's spreading through Yellowstone. But this shit is spreading um, through at least 31 United state, states in the United States, two Canadian provinces, Korea, and Europe. So, I thought that was just kind of uh, frightening because that, that's that the whole beginning of Train to Busan it starts with a duck with a deer with like chronic wasting disease or some shit dying and like and that's how it spreads. But so like it can spread um, to a- animals too in Train to Busan because that's the most horrifying zombie apocalypse to me is like you know like mosquitoes can give it to you. Everybody's fucked. I, I don't know if it's like 
much as animals, but it was, it's like, I'm pretty sure with this chronic wasting disease, we might need to look this up, but I'm pretty sure it's like, they're telling people to steer clear of the wildlife because we can get it. I'm pretty sure you can contract it Great. or get something from it. Maybe that's why they're saying to stay away from them. But, um, yeah, it's like when you look into what it, you see that what it causes is like excessive drooling, drooping ears, head tremors, teeth grinding, and reluctance to move. They'll just like stand in place and just like stare and shit. And look up some pictures. You've probably seen pictures. Oh, yeah. It's pretty freaky shit, dude. But like, um, apparently they've, uh, they've no, I didn't know, but it's been around since they discovered it in the early 1980s in Wyoming. And it actually affects 10 to 15% of the mule deer in Wyoming right now. Like there's that, I mean, so it's like, I mean, it's pretty widespread, really, for like a... I only heard about it like five or six years ago. I thought it was fairly new. Yeah, it's, it's been going on for a while, apparently. And it's kind of creepy. Kind of makes you wonder uh, what could happen. Kind of like, you know, it's kind of like with the uh, um, Last of Us thing. You know, the, the spores and that, that whole story is like... It's, is really cool and more realistic, I feel, because it's like it's just a type of spore that adapts that it can do that to humans now when it was only able to do that to insects and shit that that really happens in out in nature. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I guess the good news kinda is kind of scary. I guess the good news is, is you could go trophy hunting and make you an Evil Dead 2 replica of the zombie deer head. Yeah. Without really much work. But you couldn't get the part where it's like. <laughs> I'll just run some electricity through it. <laughs> Before you like, had some venison stew the other day. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> Nathan, you're looking tasty. <laughs> <laughs> tasty over there, boy. You're looking tasty, tasty, tasty. All right, I got another story from Sky Sky News about Pablo's hippos. Oh, I had that one. Oh, did you? Yeah, go ahead. In Colombia, start sterilizing hippos descended from drug kingpin Pablo Escobar's pets. I've heard, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they apparently, like, spread. Yeah, but for, first of all, like, I, I am going into this raw because I didn't want to read this shit. With, I wanted to do it live, but uh, I don't understand why you would sterilize those hippos. Did he, did he fuck them up or something? No, what it is is they're like... They're considered like an invasive species now. There's Don't like hundreds just, of them. They couldn't just capture the fucking hippo? Yeah, and then they're taking some of them and euthanizing them. Uh, couldn't they just take, they, it, take this, them to where they're native? This is a stupid thing about what for me is. It says, because they have no natural predators. What the fuck eats hippos in Africa? Yeah. <laughs> and they're vegetarians and they kill more human beings than sharks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, they kill more human beings than I everything else in Africa that. combined. And, and like, the they more than lions, more than crocodiles, everything. Like, and it's just because they think we suck. <laughs> like, because there's just, no reason for them to do it. Well, they just like, they're just so territorial. It's like you see those videos of them, like a crocodile accidentally yeah. swam up in the middle of a pod and they just started grabbing that motherfucker and just flinging him around, like tossing him. Like, like when you see fucking killer whales tossing seals, like they're just mean as hell. And it's like, what? That's what I'm saying. Like, it says they have no natural predators, and so they're an invasive species in yeah. Colombia, but they don't have any really natural predators in Africa. Except, I mean, a baby might get nabbed every once in a while by a crocodile or something. But Well, it says the uh, they're trying to sterilize them because the population could grow to 1,000 by 2035 if they don't intervene because they've spread into nearby rivers. Which, also, think about that. If that means it's just the hippos that he housed at his personal zoo, there was probably not enough population for genetic diversity. That means these are inbred, hill, like, hippos. These are hillbilly hippos. Hillbilly hippos. Yeah, these are yeah. hillbilly, super strong, <laughs> inbred fucking hippos. Yeah. And, like, I guess I understand. It's like the, they could be, really be destroying the environment. Yeah. There's tons of them eating I, everything this up. This sounds like and, a great horror film, dude. Hillbilly hippos. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, we should we should pitch it. I've heard uh, Steve Irwin said one of the only uh, uh, time he was actually scared of shooting was he was going through a river with a bunch of hippos. Oh yeah, because they're unpredictable. Yeah, he said that actually scared him. So apparently they're going to sterilize 40 hippos a year, transfer others to different countries, 
and may euthanize some of the animals. They have no natural predators like we were talking about. Sterilization, sterilization takes time because spotting and capturing the territorial aggressive three-ton animals is complicated. Now, I wouldn't want to be the guy going out there after them. That's for sure. I want to see the guy they've got hippo wrangling, dude. <laughs> like, I want to see who, like, like who fucking dives into those waters. <laughs> I want to see the hillbilly hippo, dude. Just sit there like old Greg. What you doing in my waters? <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Let's see. The amount of rain has made things even more difficult. More grass means they have an oversupply of food, so baiting them. Why are they jerking them off? To capture them becomes even more complicated, he said. A group of hippos, yeah, okay, so they were bought in the 1980s to Escobar's private zoo, Hacienda Napoles, which became a tourist attraction after his death in 1993. That's cool. I didn't know his, like, private zoo became a, t- like, a tourist yeah, attraction. Yeah, I mean, they might as well, I guess. I guess Do something uh, with the it. The zoo was just here. Well, how'd it come to be? Never you mind that. <laughs> I mean, it was built with all the, you know, all the people's coke money, so. Do you think any of those hippos did the coke, like... Probably. They're probably all addicted to coke. Cocaine hippo. Definitely. That's the next movie. Cocaine hillbilly Co- hippo. Yeah, cocaine, cocaine hillbilly, hillbilly, hillbilly hippos. Yeah, my mom now get... Yeah. All right, well, that's about it with that. Well, before I go to my next one, I also just want to mis- mention back on that chronic wasting disease that freaks me out so much. Mm-hmm. They also have no vaccine for it and no no treatment for it. Great. Mm. Yeah, so that's beautiful. Somebody needs to work on that. Yeah. <laughs> my next one is... Uh, uplifting about no it's not uplifting at all <laughs> it's fucked up but it's like okay uk man uh who's you, he's a writer well hold on you know from, nothing from, ever starts good when the headline starts with anything followed by man because it's always like <laughs> german man uk well, you, man, florida man florida man he's a writer he, i guess he was working from home his, his name was chris rowley he's 59 years old from the uk um was walking in his home and he has a small kitten, you know, the little sphinx, Egyptian sphinx cats, the hairless cats. Oh, that's what they're called? Yeah, they're called a sphinx. He had a little kitten. He was walking to his steps. The kitten decided to, like, run and playfully jump and grab his leg and, like, attack him. You know how they'll do when they're playing? Uh, he lost his footing when it bit into his leg. And he fell down 14 stairs and <laughs> suffered... Uh, like equal to a car crash worth of injuries. Fourteen flights are just literally fourteen, 14 steps. steps. Fourteen steps. He fractured his skull. He broke his neck. He fractured his spine. Smashed his ribs and was left with blood in his lungs. And then this is the sad part too, dude. Is his phone? He had not charged his phone, and his phone was dead. Mm-hmm. So, and his wife was working a night shift. So he laid in the floor for fourteen. <coughs> 14 hours. Fell down 14 steps, laid on the floor for 14 hours before his wife found him. And the heroic cat had eaten his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a bad yeah. So much so, when I was looking this up earlier, Michael was there, and, and, and the people who wrote the article, oh, what was the, uh, what was the one? <laughs> what was the, uh, oh, this kitten put hell in Hello Kitty. <laughs> Mike, Mike, Michael was like, shut up. <laughs> There's another one. Uh, another one. They're referring to it as the apocalypse meow incident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this poor guy's in the hospital and says it'll take at least six to twelve months for him to recover. What does this have to do? What did the cat even do? The cat was just there. It's just tripping, right? the ankle. <laughs> it was just the genesis of the incident. So it was like, oh, okay. There's a cat the cat was just playing. And as he was about to go down the steps, the cat was just playing like a because it's a kitten. And he jumped on his leg, latched onto him, and bit him. And he acted like it was like, hurt so bad. It's like, it's a kitten. Like, I've had kittens, like, just tear into me. I mean, it's not, it doesn't feel great, but it's not like. But anyway, he lost his footing. I feel for the guy. He, he was on the steps at the time. He slipped and fell. What's the internet like editors doing for this shit? Like, I wonder if he was kick just this like, down to the special interest stories and tell him a thousand bad puns. <laughs> I just picture like him falling like Looney Tunes, like they go, like a board. And he like hits his head and he's like Toosh. head to feet, head to feet, head to feet. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I had on that one. All right, I have a story about a pink pond. Also from Sky News. Pink Pond. 
Pond mysteriously turns bright pink and why, as experts reveal why. As experts reveal why, it's a cause for concern. Fascinated visitors are flocking to the pond, with volunteers saying they have never oh, seen, I think I've seen anything article. like it before. Though it may look fun, officials think the cause could be concerning. Yeah, it's a fucking pink pond, do you think? So a pond in Hawaii has mysteriously turned bright pink with experts voicing concerns about the bizarre phenomenon. Curious on look at Jesus Christ, yeah, restated a thousand times. Is it like some kind of algae? Let's see. Volunteer, uh, the volunteers that have been around the water for 70 years say they've never seen anything like it before. Get to the point. Brett Wolf, the refuge manager, said he was the first to, was first alerted by someone walking on the beach who told him, There's something weird going on over here. That's an approximation of what I assume the guy's voice sounded like. Yeah. But while it may look fun, officials think the cause of the pond turning pink could be more concerning. Christ, say the same thing a thousand times. Maui has been experiencing a drought, which scientists say may be responsible. Toxic algae yeah, was first introduced. A suspect <laughs> Considered a suspect, but lab tests found it was not the cause of the color. No? Instead, an organism called halobacteria, or halobacteria, I guess, might be the culprit. Halobacteria are a type of archaea or single-celled organism that thrive in bodies of water with high levels of salt. The salinity inside the Kila Pond outlet area is currently twice the salinity of seawater. However, Mr. Wolf said the pond had previously been through periods of drought and high salinity, and remains a mystery why the colors change now. DNA analysis still needs to be done to confirm the source of the transformation. They're assuming the pink panther jerked off into it. So visitors are being warned not to enter the water or eat any fish caught there while the cause is investigated. I blame it. It's probably with the Joker, dude. Joker fish are going to be in there. Joker fish? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot about those guys. The last thing the last thing I had was just that um, apparently this chick went viral on TikTok after... No uh, way. Yeah. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. Um... No, but her car caught on fire. She had a Stanley, uh, like, tumbler Stanley. cup made by Stanley. Okay. Um, her car caught on fire, and the Stanley know. tumbler was, like, in perfect condition. And when she went, got into her car and, like, pulled it out, it was all burnt and crispy kind of on the outside, but it still even had the ice in it. Mm-hmm. So it was, like, so good publicity for Stanley. They uh, bought her a new car. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was pretty cool. When companies do shit like that, it's pretty cool. If it's not set up and fake, it might have been set up and fake. Yeah, they but set it didn't her car look. on fire. <laughs> yeah, Stanley set her car on fire just to prove how badass their tumblers are. And they're like, okay, we'll get you a new one now. <laughs> Did you see this shit? Still cold. <laughs> That's uh, all I have. All right, I've got a story about mushrooms. From NPR, Australian police charge a woman with three murders and alleged mushroom poisoning. Oh, yeah, I heard about this one. It's mm. the kind of story a mystery novelist might conjure, but for months a real murder case has been playing out in small in a small Australian town where three people died after eating a family meal. That, <laughs> geez, that me. A succulent meal? A Chinese meal? <laughs> Wasn't Wellington? Yeah, I think she made a, yeah, she, or some kind of, yeah, it's like Beef Wellington or something. Yeah. yeah. And she say, she tried yeah, to claim she tried to blame it on the Asian market. I heard, yeah, I heard all about this. Like <laughs> three counts of murder. Yeah, she supposedly used death cat mushrooms in it. Yeah, she's trying to say she that she was the Asian market sold them to her, even though they're deadly. Yeah, are they tasty? Well, you can't ask her family. She put a teeny bit in hers, so it looked like she ate some too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was about to say if that's if that's true, then how come she didn't eat them? Yeah, she ate a very small portion, not anything close to compared to what her family ate. Uh, yeah, look it up on NPR. That's pretty much the gist of it. Yeah, and, and I haven't heard any, it probably didn't have any news in like how her trial is going. It's Australia, right? Yeah. Yeah, you won't hear much. I'm pretty sure they're like pretty like tight-lipped on like well, she does have crimes and well, stuff and, until everything goes think through. I'm that these mushrooms may have contributed to the illness suffered by my loved ones. <laughs> <laughs> she said in August in a statement to police obtained by Australian broadcaster ABC, I really want to repeat that I had absolutely no reason to hurt these people whom I loved. Fucking assholes. She's a nutbag. <laughs> but yeah. That's it on that one? Yeah. I guess we can k- keep updated and try to keep track of it, kind of like with the trial with the... I haven't looked 
But maybe for the next episode, I'll just see if there's any update on the girl who had, you remember the married couple just oh, yeah. married on the golf cart else. and she hit him drunk and killed him or killed the, the bride and stuff. Yeah, I had another story, but we can actually skip it because it's just Alan Moore complaining about V for Vendetta being adapted into a movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he, yeah, he talked about it being like the, uh, what was it, a Bush era something. Yeah. I can't remember. But, I mean, he's always bringing that up, and, like, you yeah. know, he, he has several good points. Oh, yeah. I mean, they did change it a lot. Oh, yeah, that was my biggest complaint. But uh, we can talk about that next week if you want. Or <laughs> not at all. <laughs> now we can. I mean, it's fine with me. We can bring it up in this one. we got plenty of time. Oh, well, shit. Hold on. I was just going to say, like, too, is, like, get y'all's opinions. Kind of like... um. Like with horror movies and stuff going on right now, it feels like it feels like there's a lot of really good shit coming out. Like, it feels like we're having like a little bit of a resurgence. Yeah, but because you know like, how it keeps lulling and yeah, but we're having a resurgence with stuff like Terrifier two and things like that. Things that are scoot, things that aren't going directly through Hollywood. Stuff that's right. like scoot independent. Like, yeah, because this this apparently, like I found out, went around the MPAA. They didn't Terrifier get rated. Yeah, they didn't get rated. They somehow got a theatrical release. I don't remember how. I don't remember how they did it, but uh, it made money. It made with a limited. Yeah, made re- good money. It made uh, with a limited release. It made a little bit of money. So what I'm hoping is, from what I read, he he spent two hundred fifty thousand to make it. Yeah. And he made like almost two million or something, two or three million or something like that off of it. Well, what I'm hoping so, was that crowdfunded too. Some partially, yeah, but uh, what I'm hoping is that the more I'm hoping that movies in general will somehow figure out a way to scrap the MPAA, especially like independent films. I'm really hoping what happens though is that we get the reason horror films used to be good is because studios didn't get involved with them. What they did is they essentially like, huh, this costs about a hundred thousand dollars to produce, and we know they're going to make. About five million or something like that, or relatively low cost, high returns, and they didn't do shit. And then, and then they didn't do shit as far as fuck with the director and the writers. And then when they became like huge smash hits, that's when the studios got involved and the quality dipped drastically. And Friday Thirteenth, where they sort of heavily censoring it, all yeah, the that, gore and stuff. That's what I'm saying, man. Is like stuff like that. If you, if they would do, if they would just cut a fucking check let the create like let oh. the creatives do what the creatives want to do they would make their money that's the problem is like most horror films now are formulaic garbage if you want to find good horror films it's either got to be independent movies or foreign films i i basically refuse to watch like anything they fucking that comes to theaters that's a horror film terrifier 2 being the exception because they scooted the mpaa and went around the studio system Oh, there's a, yeah, and there's another one I want to mention. Like, I watched another good one. It was pretty badass. Um, and it had some, because you mentioned Friday the 13th, Michael, um, is a Polish horror movie. Okay. It came out in 2020. It's called Nobody Sleeps in the Woods Tonight. All right. And it's about these this woman who lived out in, like, the middle of nowhere in Polish woods somewhere. And um, it's kind of got, like, the whole camper thing, you know, like the whole theme where these kids, these these kids are in trouble. I can't remember what they're in trouble for exactly. Oh, it's like a program where they're going to get away from electronics. They're like all considered addicted to electronics in some way. Okay. Like some of them with their phone and social media. One of them, one kid's like a, a streamer and he spends like 16, 17 hours a day streaming every day. And it's all like their parents have forced them to like go to this thing. Well, this woman lives in the woods and it kind of gives the backstory. She has these two kids. They're twin boys. And they're like a little poor family, no dad around or anything. And this meteor or, some, or something that like comes, explodes in the atmosphere. And it's like the kids, boys see it and it falls. And they go and get this rock and take it back. Where like something inside that rock, when they keep it in their room, it's like this black shit. It almost reminds you of the symbiote. Like leaks out of it and gets in them and turns them into these fucking like cannibalistic little freaks. And she locks them in the basement, like Evil Dead style. Mm-hmm. And like that's where she keeps them forever, and then like, she, and it leads to them being grown. And it's like so it's like these two twin brothers, and they're all like they get they have these two great big old huge guys playing them, and they're all like nasty and fucking. But they're like murdering all these fucking teenagers, and there's like there's a homage to fucking 
Friday the 13th because one of the big guys takes a kid in a sleeping bag and does the sleeping bag against the tree. That's and awesome. they do it really well, like not cheesed out, kind of like when – Remember in Jason X Jason when X. he redid it and it was just yeah. it was cheesy in that like it was this movie's actually pretty damn good like I think you should check it out. There's a sequel I haven't watched it, but um, nobody sleeps in the woods tonight and I hadn't seen a I don't think I've ever watched a Polish horror movie so like that I know of so I'd have to really think I probably it was pretty good. Been. Check it out. Uh, well, speaking of Michael that. says check it out. Speaking of Friday the 13th, what's the worst Friday the 13th movie in your opinion? I mean, Jason X. <laughs> Dude, I I would think that, but I've recently gone back and rewatched a lot. Of it. It, to me, it's uh, fucking... What, Manhattan? No, Jason... Uh, Manhattan's fun, man. It's Jason. Like, <laughs> Jason goes to hell. Yeah. Yeah, Jason goes to hell. That's the worst. Like, 10 is stupid, but at least it's... Jason X had some, it's had some fun-ass kills and shit. Yeah. And space is fun. Space is always fun. <laughs> like, I mean, it's idiotic. It's dumb as fuck, but dude, like, nine tried and failed so hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually like, like, right, a lot of people do, like, don't, I mean, don't like Jason Takes Manhattan, but I enjoy it because it's, it's like, it, it's got, like, a little bit of tinge of, like, comedy, like, when the guy's with the boombox and he walks by and knocks mm -hmm. it off and they're all, like, bitching at him and he turns around and raises his mask and they're like, oh, we're sorry, we're sorry, we're sorry. Like that kind of shit. And the, the, the guy trying to box him on the roof. Yeah. <laughs> he knocks his head off. That was good. I mean, you could have also called it Jason Spins Five Minutes in Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chris Dunn's on a boat. Also, Parentheses, I wanna, actually. Also, yeah. I want to go to Crystal Lake in Minnesota in actual real life where they put that statue. Oh, yeah. The one at the, the bottom the life, of the lake. The life size. Like, like yeah. 25 feet down. They have a, a life size Jason Voorhees statue at the bottom of the lake. He's like, he's chained at the bottom. I want to go, like, swim down with a snorkel, pet his head, <laughs> tickle his balls a little. <laughs> like that, Jason? No, dude, no. All you got to do is tickle somebody else's balls there, and then the statue will come to life. And kill you. Uh, a stone I Jason. I don't like that. <laughs> I didn't like that one bit. You dirty teenager. Uh, what's your opinion on uh, Sackface Jason? I think Sackface Jason's underrated. Sackface Jason's uh, awesome. See, that's why I didn't like, which I know you don't like the uh, the newest Friday the 13th. The remake? Yeah. It's absolute dog shit garbage. Defend it. I, I, mean, I kind of enjoyed it. The only thing I liked about it, the thing I liked about it, it was kind of, they kind of took with the whole him with his system underground, as I think they were kind of pulling from Sackface Jason more that, that kind of era before he turned into the zombie. Yeah, I love Jason taking hostages. That's great. Yeah, I mean. Not... <laughs> It's not sarcasm at all. Totally loved that. I didn't think it was too terrible compared to a lot of dude, remakes. Dude, it, it was... Compared to the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Dude, they recycled like all... It, like Part of what makes Friday the 13th great is all, all of the innovative kills, and they're fun. And I get that they were trying to mash, like, what was it? Maybe the first three together to make that movie. But yeah. it starts out where... That's what I was saying. Like It's kind of like Zack... Face Jason, like where he's more of a human. Like I get it, but at the same time, what I really fucking hate about it is they recycled like some of the most fun kills in it, and didn't and, do them and, as well. And they didn't do them as well. There was no like innovative kills. And then, dude, one thing that really takes me out of it is when the uh, chick is swimming under the bridge or the dock or whatever, and then the machete comes down and pulls her up. It's such bad CGI. It's like you couldn't spend the money to do practical effects on that. Is it as bad as the baby in Twilight? I've never seen a Twilight well, I, movie. <laughs> well, my TV sits on Riff Tracks oh, okay. channel all the time, and like in between the actual movies and the, like in the commercial because it has commercials, they'll show like little clips of movies they've riffed on, mm -hmm. and they always show this section where they're making fun of the fucking baby in Twilight. And I cannot understand how this baby looks that bad in this movie, dude. Did they make a CG baby? The baby's head, it's like it's like they're holding a real baby, <clears throat> but the baby's face and head, for some reason, is CGI'd. Why? I don't know, dude. I've like seen movies that are like 15, 20, 25 years older than this movie, and they look better than CGI. Like, it looks like something that would like fit in like Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Like, it's weird. Just check it out sometimes. Just look it up sometimes. <laughs> CGI I'll... baby in Twilight. I don't know why, I, but maybe because it's supposed to be a vampire baby or some shit. But it just looks like a baby. Uncanny baby. 
It's weird. So why didn't they just CG some little fangs on it? It's throw, just a baby looking throw around. Some fucking, throw some fucking <laughs> glitter on it's it. Just, it's, they it's, sparkle, it's, right? Just throw some it's glitter just, on it's the bitch. Robert Pattinson like holding the baby, and it's just like looking around, and it's like. Did he like nurse it? Is that how that works in that universe? Like vampire, you have to suck all glitter the, from his nipple. Yeah, you have to suck <laughs> all the glitter. father's teeth. <laughs> suck my glitter teats. But I don't know. That's how you get your glitter gland. Little I can one. see what James like. I probably have to watch it again. I might hate it now. I watch it again that Friday the Thirteenth. But like, I, I the saw Nightmare on Elm Street in theaters, and I was done. What's his name? Jackie Earl Haley. Is that his name? They played uh, or some shit like that. Like they played what? They played. Rorschach and played in Nightmare yeah, on Elm Street. Right, yeah, like he's such an awesome actor. I enjoy him so much, and it's like it's the writing on that Nightmare on Elm Street and the, what they changed in the story. I think is what made that so bad. I mean, obviously, you're never going to replace Robin England, but like, oh, wait, are you talking about the now you're talking the oh, remake yeah. of oh, Nightmare right. on Elm Street? Oh yeah, yeah. I thought we were still on Friday the Thirteenth for some reason. And um, yeah, I was just saying I went to that because it's like. That one disappointed me. Yeah, that was terrible. I just I, that was better than the Friday the Thirteenth remake by fucking far. I guess, but like, it just by disappointed me. Fu- Look, yeah, you're right. You're never gonna pl- replace Robert England. Well, what did you know? You know what they did that was great that they probably wanted to do with the original. They went full bore on Freddy's a fucking pedo. Yeah, but they made him like a like just a big w- wussy. Like they made him like oh, uh, like, you, you mean like a pedophile? No, but like Freddy was like. Never like that, you know what I mean? Like he was a child murderer and shit, but he like he didn't never like when the people were after him. He was more like no, I get you, but again, that's a directing issue. Yeah, the fact that it's not fucking Robert England, right? Like, don't get me wrong, it's not a great movie, but I'll die on the hill that it's better than the Friday the Thirteenth remake. I need to watch them both again to compare them. Yeah, but like, um, because it's been a long time now. I I I saw I probably more recently saw Nightmare on Elm Street because I haven't watched the remake of Friday the Thirteenth since (laughs) shit since our friend Jason was still alive. So, um, we're going back to Friday the Thirteenth. Now there's also do what? So go back to Friday the Thirteenth. A lot of people hate Five, but I love that one. Five is great. Yeah, I know it's not. Five is one's not really him. Oh yeah, that one is awesome. But just the so, so four. off the wall, the characters just <laughs> oh, insane <did>. freaking <laughs> Yeah. That's what I was that's why I was telling Michael like with uh with Terrifier two earlier, um how in four Corey Feldman like sees the picture of him yeah. and like shaves his head and does that makes him and confuses him, makes himself look like him when he was a child. At first I thought Terrifier two was gonna tr- pull something like that because the kid's like thinking about going as him. And for Halloween, he already has the suit hanging up on the back of his door in his bedroom and all that shit. Yeah. And I thought there was going to be some kind of interaction between him and the kid dressed up as Art. But, I mean, it would have worked. He would have, the guy would have made it work if they would have went that direction. Um, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad they didn't. Yeah. It well, could have been a cool homage, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, well, the dude who plays, the dude who plays Art's just too good. You can't replace that guy. I guess that dude's performance is just awesome. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Just like him, just like, I thought they were going to go with that, like the kid dressing up and like having some kind of scene. Like in the first one where he has the scene with the weird homeless woman. Yeah. And she starts treating him like a child and he starts yeah. sucking his thumb and stuff. I thought they might, when I first watched two, I thought they might have the kid dress oh, up as Art. Okay. okay I see and Art saying. see him and be like, you know, like, what the hook's yeah. this about? Like, and he like confuses him or gets away from him or uses it against him and like in a homage kind of to that. To night, uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Four, uh, do, but you know what the biggest bullshit though about the Friday the Thirteenth franchise is? It's the fact that if you count all the movies, so Freddy vs. Jason and the remake, there's twelve Friday the Thirteenth movies. They need to make one fucking more. Yeah. So there's thirteen of them. That actually ties in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, I I've said forever what they need to do is bring back. Uh, they need to do. They need to bridge the gap between nine and ten, and they need to do a movie where Tommy Jarvis comes back, and that needs to be. And when Jason goes down, that's why he goes down up until they fish him out in the future. Like, that's what happens. Yeah, the Tommy Jarvis stuff was always really cool. Like that was like, I wish they had like. I don't know. I guess at certain well, points had better writers and like built on it better. You know what I mean? The like, question is though, do you get the guy that played? I, I can't remember the actor's name, but do you get the guy that played uh, 
teenage and young adult Tommy Jarvis, or do you get Corey Feldman to come back? <laughs> I don't know. Have you seen the Corey Feldman stuff that's been going on for for a while now, for a couple of years and shit now? Like he's been. I mean, like that video I found I sent to you. Where he was on that weird Howard Stern show that I didn't even know Howard Stern had. It wasn't like his talk show. It was like some kind of weird. Oh, his podcast or whatever? No, this no, was like it was in strange. 1992. Oh. And it was like some kind of weird variety show or something. <laughs> but it was like all these different people there, there, like dressed up. It was like there were strippers there. There was like. All there was like a there was like a uh, little person guy dancing on the stage, but like Howard Stern had like on a skull cap and weird ass round sunglasses and like this weird leather suit with like a these shorts where his butt cheeks were hanging out. Yeah, I kept spreading his ass. Yeah, and, <laughs> and he was acting all weird and he's like introducing Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman comes out and he's gonna sing a song. He's like, now ah, Corey's gonna sing a song. It's called. And Corey's like. Yeah, it's called What's Up With The Youth. It's about our, our world's youth right now and, you know, h- how we need to help them and blah, blah, blah and all this weird stuff. And it's this song he sings and he's like dancing, trying to dance like Michael Jackson. This is 1992. Yeah, that was always the knock yeah. on him as he was I'm trying pre- to be Michael Jackson. But, like, I didn't know it was going on this long ago. And this is like a weird fever dream video, yeah. dude. Yeah. It's like it's something that slipped in from another fucking universe. I think it did. Somehow. <laughs> like, it's, it go, people can't see us, but I'm going to let you see like one guy standing up, this long haired guy's like standing up on this platform with people, and he's like doing all this like robot the, poorly. N- n- not, I don't even know is what he's doing. Seizure? I don't know. <laughs> I'll send it to you. It okay. legitimately freaked me out. <laughs> yeah, it's like, weird, it's dude. It is really. Surreal. What's up? What's up with the you? <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, Corey Feldman. Bring him back, Tommy Jarvis. <laughs> 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 oh, that was oh, no, the no, no. Here's what you do: you bring back the you bring back the guy that was the young adult, and then he has a flashback to when he was a kid, and it's just Corey Feldman now playing <laughs> Joe Tommy Jarvis. You know, um, Michael Jackson Feldman. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he can sing him "What's Up with the Youth." <laughs> I might be getting over over excited about this. Also, something that's coming out, but you heard about the Crow movie, right? Oh yeah, I just heard about it. No. Who's playing it? It's, is it it's Michael, based. Is it it's Skarsgård. It's based on the actual like. It's supposed to be closer to the comic, supposedly. Like, yeah. Far closer to the comic, and Bill Skarsgård is playing him. So, I'm like, I'm kind of like, this that might be cool. fucking cool, dude. Like, but I, 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 but I love the fucking original Crow, dude. I love that. I, fucking I movie. actually like the first three. The first one's good. The second one's pretty good. The yeah, the third already. one's good because they went, like the. Like I love City of Angels, but like yeah, the problem with that. But though, it's, it's is just so it's so like so much like Eric Draven. You know what I mean? In a lot of ways, like that's why I like the third one so much because like they actually get a totally different type of person yeah. and like a different type of well, situation. Like you know, like yeah. The problem with the second one though too is the acting wasn't great and that the villain for number two just could not act worth that shit. I took the blood of the crow. That's what it sounds like, dude. And how are you going to beat, uh, what's his name? I can never remember Death his Tones name. Deftones is in it. That's cool. I can't, in City of Angels? <laughs> yeah. They always have pretty decent music and like, oh, the, the soundtracks are always like great. The outside. first Crow soundtrack is one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. Isn't Danzig on the third one? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. From the, uh, yeah, that was the sixth album, Satan's Child music on there. Did you see the one with Eddie Furlong? That one's terrible. Yeah, it's the, so bad. The wussiest crow ever. Uh, Danny Trejo can't even save that movie. He's in it. And Danny Trejo can use save anything, too. He's just the whole time. <laughs> like, like, that's his superpower. Get his ass kicked. <laughs> Don't they do like some sort of weird like ritual? Doesn't Danny Trejo basically like dance around like a dead crow or something to like give him his powers back? It's been so it's been so long since I've know. seen it. I've only seen it once, too. I have not even seen it. Well, I remember I he right grabs the a moth over. out of the air yeah. and throws it. Throws so them off. Intimidating. Yeah, he just <laughs> grabs them off. I never watched it. I just it's couldn't bad. see Edward Furlong as a, as the crow at all. It's I mean, bad. it is what you think. He gets his ass kicked yeah. all the time. Well, Eric maybe is in the third one. Like he was good. Like the only other thing I've ever seen him in, I think, is is the reporter guy in in one of the Resident Evil movies, and he turns into Nemesis. Remember that? Oh yeah, he does turn into Nemesis. That's the only other movie I've seen Eric maybe is him, but he did a great job, I thought. What was that? Salvation? Isn't that what it was called? Yeah. With, um, what's her name? Oh. She's been in everything. She was, she was the little girl all the way, you know, all the way back in the interview with a vampire. Uh, oh, God. 
What is her name? I don't remember. I'm going to have to look it up now. The Crow Salvation. 2000. The game came out. I mean, the the movie came out. Kirsten Dunst. I remembered Eric Mabius, but I couldn't remember Kirsten Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten Dunst. (laughs) What the? (laughs) I only know him from one other fucking movie. was Resident Evil. Where he turns into... (laughs) She was Juliet. No, that was Claire Danes. That was Claire Danes. Mary Jane. She was, she was Mary, Mary Jane. Jane. That's yeah. what I meant. <laughs> you, yeah, that's what you meant. Um, yeah, so I'm excited for that, like, because I'm a huge Crow fan. And especially the first movie. I could watch the first movie. It's one of those movies I could watch, like, a yeah. hundred times a year and never get sick of it. You know what I mean? Like, just the, the lines and, like, what's his... And I can't ever remember his name, the main villain in that movie. I love that guy, and yeah, I can never remember his name. The actor, the... The, the actor. Remember. Yeah, wasn't he also in 1492? Wasn't he like the the super douchey? Uh, Spanish, yeah, Spanish. Comic? I think so. He Come was on. in. He was in. Uh, he was in one of the Three Musketeer movies. He was the villain. Oh yeah, yeah. No, he was one of the villains, wasn't he? Because wasn't it him and uh, Tim Curry? Michael Wincott. Yeah, wasn't him and Tim Tim Curry in the same movie? I I think so, man. I can't remember. I don't know, but he's been like, he was the cousin. Remember in the um, uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves? Yeah. He was, uh, you know, the sheriff's cousin in that movie. He did a really good job in that movie. Like him and... Uh, Kevin Costner. Not Kevin Costner, but you know, they played, they played the sheriff. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, Snape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman and him like really played well off each other. And like, I don't know, he's, he's just awesome. Everything he's in. But, like... Alien Resurrection. Overall, crappy movie. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. But it's shitty. Dude. And, but he is awesome in it. You know what I mean? Like, he's the leader of that fucking group. Him and, and, and you know, oh, of course, it's also got, um, um, why Ron am I? Perlman. Ron Perlman in it, which is always great. I went through those movies with my kid recently. Like, we watched Alien all the way through AVPR, and I was asking him, which one's your favorite? Or which ones are your favorite? And he said Alien. He says Aliens and Alien is like because three and four are just shitty versions of one and two. And if you think uh, it blew my fucking mind, I was like, holy shit, he's right. Yeah, because <laughs> three is essentially the just... best parts. Like I said, the best parts of Resurrection is is obviously Sigourney Weaver because yeah. Sigourney Weaver's just good. Even if she's in a crappy movie, that crappy movie, she's good. But then Michael Wincott, and then um, what's his name, uh, Chucky. Uh, Brad Dorf, his him and that weird relationship he's got, yeah. like the parts with the alien behind the glass and stuff. That was cool. Yeah, I like that. The, that movie was supposed to be would have been so much better if they hadn't scrapped uh, Josh Whedon's uh, script. Yeah, I and read his what, version of the the, the, the hybrid, hybrid baby. Yeah, I read about that man. That the movie would have been really good and a lot different, and probably not a just a shitty remake. That's back two. to what you were just talking about Hollywood yeah. taking a series and screwing it. Well, there's a good article on Cracked about, I can't remember how many movies, but it's one of those lists, something like 12 movies that, 12 terrible movies that could have been great, and like that was on there, Uh, X-Men 3 was on there, Uh, and then several others, but those are the two that stood out. Those are the two I remember from that article on the internet I read like 10 years ago. There's like another thing in a soundtrack, Spawn. Oh, was, yeah. was another one that had a great soundtrack. Dude, I... John Leguizamo was I the best part of that movie. the first Spawn movie. Yeah. I like the Leguizamo first Leguizamo was the best that, part, though. You know what I mean? Like, dude, him as Violator. Well, Michael Jai White, you can't sleep on him as Spawn. That, yeah. like, that was fucking cool. Yeah, and they did really well with the special effects they had for the time. Like, you know, like, it looked pretty damn good. Especially yeah. his cape and stuff. That was taking on a lot for that time. Oh, yeah, well, and don't get me wrong. Like, Mal Bulger, if you go back, looks like shit. Yeah. Now. But, I, yeah, for the time, that shit looked really good. Some of it still looks really The cape stuff was awesome. Yeah. How he made, like, when he was on the bike and he made, like, the the shield and the spikes and everything with his cape. Uh, did you all ever play the Super Nintendo Spawn game? Uh, that was hard as hell. I think so, yeah. It's like a brawler, isn't it? Yeah, it's hard as hell, dude. It's a platformer to Did you ever play extent. the shitty PlayStation 1? No. That game? was the only one I remember. That game sucked dick. <laughs> <laughs> there was one on Dreamcast, I think, that was really good, though. Uh, yeah. What else we got coming besides the crow? 
Uh, you might want to edit this one out, but I, if we've got the, if we're doing the fire, since you didn't have a question, like here, here's something about the uh, the nature of consent that we can all that we can uh, debate. Can you rape a zombie? And, and now, a movie. Now, here, here, here you go. It has to be like the classic version of a zombie, because of course, if it's like Fido or Night of the Living Dead Three, where they have agency and there's a little bit of a vestige of humanity, sure you can make a case for it. But I'm talking about the classic. All they do is kill. All, like all they do is kill. They have no like. There's no trace of their humanity I think left it would or be, anything. I think it would be like some kind of weird, because let's just like recently on, like. Last podcast, they did a whole thing about uh, necrophilia. Yeah. Um, and there's like, there's so many um, sections and like levels of types. There's like, like seven or eight. There's like 12. Maybe there's 12, yeah. yeah. Like, it would probably be lumped into that. It would probably be lumped into that, like some kind of necrophilia. <laughs> well, yeah, because I was going to get to necrophilia, but okay, with that, can you murder a zombie? No. Like, like, no. You can't, because I, I was talking to. They're her, already dead. Yeah, I was talking to my girlfriend, and it's like, well, if it's not bothering you, it's like, yeah, but it would bother you. Like, wouldn't that essentially be pest control? Shouldn't you treat a zombie like locust? Leave it zombie invasive, alone. He's not bothering you. Yeah, or invasive, <laughs> like, once he smells you or hears you. Yeah, yeah it's like you like if it was just somebody was like your family member, of course you're going to feel bad about it, and it's going to be hard, but they're already dead. You know what I mean? Like, you ever heard the of, other thing is necrophilia, right? You ever heard of dead girl? It'd be a new kind of thing. It'd be a new category. But it's not. That's what I'm saying, though. Is like necrophilia. It's not new, though. It's necrophilia has been around forever. No. So how's it classified? The rape part. Necrophilia rape. Yeah, but Put okay. them together. So here's the other thing: is because like, they're moving, and you're doing it probably. I mean, it really is against their will because even if they're just trying to eat you, then they probably don't. They're not wanting you to do that, I guess. Oh, okay. We'll see now. Are they, <laughs> but what do they want? All they want is brains. Is what yeah. I'm getting. At. I, I'm oh, not you're like married. Return of the Living Dead type zombies no we're talking about just the classic zombie oh, okay yeah, talking, a, they just want flesh or whatever yeah they can get to because because again you can find it you can find a very if we nitpick you can po- find a version of a zombie where it's clearly rape yeah like There's you know a, like fido if it's fido zombies that's right that's totally you know what i mean like it is there's a movie about that it's called dead girl i have mm-hmm. it all right and uh they change this zombie up in a abandoned house or whatever and just rape it <laughs> That's the forgot the whole, how it ends. That's what the whole movie is <laughs> about. That's what the whole Probably with them about. getting their dicks bitten. Off. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but uh, I mean, there's justice for the zombie. I think. Yeah, justice for the zombie. That should that be. should be the sequel. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> the you zombie should, has you, their you, day you, in you, court. You shouldn't. You just should. Yeah, you shouldn't. Do uh, it. Probably shouldn't. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying with the well, and that's the other thing too is like I wonder like it's never been covered, but can you catch the. Uh, like again, depending on the universe, curse and or disease through sexual contact. Probably, you would think. <laughs> yeah. Well, they did. What they do in that movie, Dead Girl? I guess not. I don't think. No. They wore condoms. They were sexual. No, they didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it sounds so familiar. Like I probably seen it advertised or something. Oh, well, like in, in, I don't remember seeing it. Just for future reference, and I know I'm in the minority here, but like when I'm dead, I'm dead. I really don't give a shit what happens to my body. There's a bunch of necrophiliacs, and my family can make money off of it. Throw me in a corner and let some freak <laughs> blast it. I'm not using it. I'm not there. I'm not going to feel it. I don't give a shit. That's no longer my. I was just amazed by like the categories. You need to listen to that one. Like, it's just nuts. Like, I do. I'm behind on their stuff. But yeah, that's uh, that's. I figured the discussion would go on a little bit longer on that, but also, <laughs> not really. <laughs> but that's all I had. That was going to be next week. Well, is there anything else going on, like, movie-wise, game-wise, you can think of? You know, like, uh, I haven't kept up with anything coming out, reading, like, like video game-wise. No, nah, see, I, I'm just about done with Baldur's Gate 3, so I'm about to start Spider-Man 2. And then uh, I, I know there's stuff coming out. Well, the, the Wolverine game's coming out. I don't know when, but I'm looking forward to that. I'm hoping that's good. What is it? The Wolverine game. Oh, there might, there's a Wolverine game coming? Yeah, it's going to be connected to the Insomniac uh, like Spider-Man universe. Oh, cool. That will be cool. And I, I'm hoping that's good, man. I'm hoping, that's, I'm hoping that does for Wolverine what 
you know, I'm hoping that is for Wolverine what, like, the Arkham series was for Batman. <laughs> Which, you know, now granted, like, the Arkham series peaked with Arkham City, because, you know, Arkham Knight is weird. And I don't know how he's, you know, you can't really justify Batman's no-kill rule with him just landing his Batmobile on people. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. you know, Spider-Man technically doesn't kill either, and by that token, you know, you... You can just swing and throw, motherfucker. Because that used to be the, my favorite thing to do in the last in the first Spider-Man game was like Spider-Man doesn't kill. Let me throw this dude off this building. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, plus, the Batmobile turns into a tank with explosive missiles. Yeah, that's they're true non-lethal too. explosive missiles. Yeah. Huh? They're not dying. They're not dying. <laughs> it reminds me of that what was the Batman or whatever. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna put him to sleep. <laughs> I'm but it's like uh, they're on a farm. For I know, rich like people. I know, like this. Al- at, they finally made an Alan Wake two, and it's just as shitty as the first one. I think. Like, I was watching. I watched a little bit of like Doctor Disrespect playing it, mm-hmm. and like, yeah, it was bad. And, like our buddy Daniel was like was texting me about it as he was watching him play, and he was like, "Dude, the writing in this game is so terrible." He said it was like a it was like a a twelve year old trying to write like. Like serious, like. <laughs> Isn't he a writer? Yeah, and the guy's supposed to be a writer yeah. as well. Like, but it's the same. What's weird is it's the same, and then, and then there's this weird tie-in with like because the same company owns like the rights to like Max Payne and something else, and they all kind of tie into it's. There's a weird universe that kind of like cross. So there's a character in it. There's an FBI agent, uh-huh. and people are freaking out about it because he looks just like Max Payne from like the original game. But it's, it's not Max Payne, but the same voice actor all does his voice. Okay. And, like, I was like, that's kind of sad because, like, I get, like, Max Payne was awesome because it was doing that on purpose. It had that over-the-top noir, like, detective yeah. storytelling. Like, the rain was coming down like sheets of metal. You know, like, all that <laughs> bullshit, like, purposefully. But, like, yeah. this Alan Wake <laughs> stuff was just, like... It's just bad. You get a chance to like see some. They're like taking themselves very seriously, and it's like really just terrible writing. So what's the deal with like, dude? I, I don't pay attention to anybody that like games for like Twitch or whatever. What's the deal with Doctor Disrespect? I, I've seen like a picture of him. I, you know, he looked to me, if I remember right, he looks like Doctor Robotnik with a mullet. Kind of. Well, he's just got. A, he's guys. It's it's an actual real mustache. He's got fake hair, but he's just like this dude that like. He his whole persona is he's he acts like he's like it's just a gimmick of him acting like he's like the best and like he talks about himself like talks himself up he's like because he is like he's like six foot eight he's like a really tall skinny dude but he's like six foot eight something foot vertical leap like vertical jump like two time. 1993, 1994 video game champion, like a blockbuster, blockbuster. video go, video game champion, like all this stuff. Like he just like talks like he's some kind of like crazy badass, and he does like all these intro intro videos. Oh, okay. And now that he's made money, he like makes them real elaborate. Like he'll like look like he's in some kind of for red Ferrari. It's got like a symbol on it, and he's driving and like just over the top silly shit. It's like his backgrounds will look like he's got like a whole headquarters, and like. And it's he's just he's pretty entertaining. He is a badass at like shooter games. Like you watch him, he's like he's good and he's very entertaining. Like and he does funny shit like with kids sometimes. Like he'll like surprise kids when he's playing with them. Candy and vans. No, he'll like be playing with them and like he'll be on the headset and there'll be a little kid. This little kid and sounds like he's like ten. And be like, hey, what's up? We're gonna do this. What? And he'll, he'll talk back to him. He'll be like, yeah, okay, let's do it. And like as soon as they do something like to fuck up or mess up, he'll be like. Come on! What are you doing? Like all of a sudden, screaming in his normal voice. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's pretty good. I don't know. You know what I'd rather do than watch him play those shooter. You know what I'd rather do than watch him play those shooter games? Play those fucking shooter games. Yeah, well, like some of them, I'm not gonna play. Like so, like I watch him for the entertainment value nah, because he'll like just like fuck with people and like just like and like. <laughs> Like, his intro stuff is just good, and, like, the stuff he does before. And, like, he does this thing now where he, like, wor- plays Wordle against the Champions Club. It's what he calls all the people that, like, his, are his viewers. Uh, and, like, he'll play a game of Wordle against them, and he gets all, like, it's just super. He always acts like he's, like, super cocky, and, like, he's just a funny character. He's funny. He's entertaining. I like him. I'll usually watch Eris more than I watch him, though. 
because Eris is just himself, but th- that entertaining, you know, so he's not playing a character. He's just himself. So Michael enjoys Eris too. Check him out. Oh, yeah. Avoiding the puddle. That's what his channel is. Yeah. Uh, he used to be like, uh, do a lot of fighting game commentating and stuff because he was like a, a pro player for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then now he's just like a variety streamer. He just plays all kinds of different games, and like he plays, he likes to play like like cheap indie like survival horror games and shit. And like uh, he's pretty entertaining. But out of streamers, that's about all I watch because I'm usually just playing games myself. But like the only streamers I'm going to watch, I don't like. I don't watch any of them for watching. Th- Particularly the game they're playing, I watch them for the, their inter- their entertainment. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I get you. Some people do enjoy just like watching the games they play, but like more so, it's like yeah, because it's just, he's an entertainer. It's like it's fun to watch, be there with him as he's playing the game. Yeah, it's like Mystery Science Theater, but for video games. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, exactly. Good. Good point. Good call. Good call. I disagree. Yeah, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, there's a. Have you ever played the Cthulhu games, the little indie games? There's like Cthulhu Saves the World. No, nah, I played the I played the Call oh, of Cthulhu didn't. game. Apparently, they're releasing one now. I mean, this might be new or older. I don't know, but it's coming out for PS5. It's called Cthulhu Saves Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> for like, I got into those like way back on like when I was still playing Xbox 360. Look, it's really it was close. on the arcade, like. These small games that you can get, like mm-hmm. there's like another one. It's Christmas. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Like I haven't heard of anything that's As like really hard. Grew three sizes that day. the new RoboCop <laughs> game looks pretty fun. Have you seen that? Yeah. No. I watched Eris play some of that. Uh, oh, it's out. It's out. Yeah. And it, they got what's his what's his dick, the actor. Peter Weller. Peter Weller to do the voice. They got the original chick to do his partner's voice. Which, she still shoot? sounds yeah. young. And likes can you shoot the cocks off? You shoot people in the dicks. Can, well, can you? Can you, like, can you specifically go around? Like, I mean, yeah, you can shoot people in the dicks. And they're like, you know, like, I've seen, like, uh, who was it? Somebody playing. That's what they were going to do is try to just dick shot everybody. Oh, there should be an achievement for, like, shooting 100 people in the dick or something. <laughs> they might have put that in there. It's pretty good. It was, like, it's more of an independent company, but, like, it was done pretty cool. Oh, like, there, there you can be. pick up, like, dudes. You can grab dudes yeah. and use them as human shields, and you can just go and just, like, throw them across the fucking screen and hit people with them. Oh, there's got to be something like that, too. Like, can you fly, Bobby, as an achievement? <laughs> like, people are still doing nuke and shit in it. <laughs> Man, I just like the idea of the achievements and the bitches leave. <laughs> oh, y'all gonna get the new farming simulator? Sure. I, I don't know. <laughs> what are they doing? What, what's the new? You thing? grow corn uh, is it not and like wheat a... and uh, soybeans. Oh, uh, so it's not like Harvest Moon. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can you do, can you uh, bang your animals and create unholy human hybrids? No. You have like a cow man. Sell the forbidden beef. No. <laughs> <laughs> None of that. Farming simulator. <laughs> Sell the forbidden beef. <laughs> I'd buy it. Dude. Have you played any of the newer the new wrestling games? Because you know how they went to shit there for a while when they got dude. To... I, I stopped because they made them like the UFC games. <laughs> like the, they made them really bad, dude. Like you would instead of like just winning matches, you'd have to go through these stupid like for wrestling, go through these stupid training mini games to get your stats. And I, I used to like it. Just start out with basic stats, win matches, and then you can upgrade. But no, it's just like, do the most boring shit, like block a hundred punches, or do, you know what I mean? Like That's weird. Well, I know like one one year, like 2K decided they didn't need the team that originally like did them. Yeah. Remember that one that came out and it was like super buggy and everybody fucking hated it and they like, they went back on that real quick. I think they brought them back. That was a couple of years after I stopped playing them, dude. The, the game I want to play that that's out, I want to play WrestleQuest. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the RPG. 
<laughs> I'm so ready for WrestleQuest, dude. It's out, but I've been playing too many games. But I'm getting that on Steam soon. <laughs> I've been playing this game a little bit. i got a couple of videos I did. I'm going to go back to it and do another one, I think. It's called um, Punch Club. Oh, okay. And it's like this, it's like kind of like 16-bit, maybe a little bit better than 16-bit style graphics. But you like play as a guy. He's like, it's a whole story, backstory of your dad. And, you know, your dad was a fighter and blah, blah, blah. Something happened to this mysterious guy, like killed him or whatever. Anyway, you're becoming a fighter. But you move around. You go around town. You train. You got to like go to work. Like, it doesn't take very long, but you, like, do jobs to earn money, and you got to, like, manage your time and, like, make sure you eat and do all this shit. But it's, like, but it has, like, RPG elements. It's almost, like, turn-based. And you get, like, skill trees, and you can pick the type of fighter you do. But then you go in the ring, and it's, like, turn-based stuff, and you pick what moves you're you and, and you, like, have hit points, and it does the fights and shit. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Like, I've been enjoying it. Like, it was, like, I thought it was going to be, because I think I bought it for really cheap on the store, and, like... I thought it was just going to be some kind of just like cheesy, get in there and mash buttons and be nothing to it. But it's like elaborate, like skill trees and like RPG elements and shit. It's pretty cool. Like it's pretty fun. Punch Club. Might check it out. I have a Punch Club. We just sit around and see Hawaiian Punch. (laughs) Different different brands? Different. Who's the best? Hawaiian Punch. Oh, like like Hawaiian Punch? Hawaiian Hawaiian Punch. Punch? Yeah. Who's second best? Uh, Hawaiian Punch. <laughs> Hawaiian Punch Orange. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> so, Hawaiian Punch it's, Blue is like third? One. I'm saying green. It's third? Third. Blue? You're going to put blue all the way down the list? Yeah. <laughs> That's really saddening. You got to join the pub. Join the club and you can voice your opinion. <laughs> right, right now, it doesn't matter. Until then. You're not in the club. Not in the club. <laughs> Maybe you can move up the list. You ever wondered why, like, these games, like, they have so much potential to be fun as hell and really, really cool? Like, made out of some of these, like, animes. Uh-huh. And they always end up being kind of, like, just, like, half-ass. Like, I got the One Punch Man uh-huh. game. Because it was on sale one, for a while back. It's just kind of like. Well, it's because they're cash grabs, dude. They're they're not putting anything. They're not putting anything behind it because they know they can sell the IP. That's what because it is. they're so popular. Yeah, it's popular enough. It's like oh, so I have to say though, the fist of the fist of the North Star game that was on PS4. Yeah. The second one they made because there was one on PS3. I think this one's called like Kinshiro's Revenge or some shit like that. I don't know. That one's actually fucking cool. Are the Sega did fist of the North Star like as as an anime? Did you know that you still can't. Some of the mangas have still not ever been translated in like English. Like you still can't get them in English. For Fist like, in the North Star. Yeah, some of the old shit. That's crazy. Yeah, I was reading that a while back online. Like because I picked up this game on uh, Sega Genesis recently, and it's called Last Battle. Yeah. And it was a Fist of the North Star game in Japan, and they like changed it over for whatever reason, and like changed the name of the characters and like some of the color palettes and stuff. But it's clearly Fist of the North Star. It looks just like Kenshiro. And like, um, but you like kick guys and punch them. They just fly off the screen. But the Japanese version, you hit them and they explode into blood and shit. And like, it's, yeah, it's not good. I have the Fist of the North Star game. It plays almost exactly the same on NES. But it's called Fist of the North Star. But for some reason, they changed the Genesis game and didn't, didn't keep the blood. Like, usually Genesis had a lot of blood. It's like you're saying, man. It's like some of these anime games are great. Like, there's some Dragon Ball Z games that are great, but there's also some Dragon Ball Z games that are fucking terrible. Yeah, it just depends. That like, there's some really good anime games, but there's some really terrible ones. Usually, it's just a cash grab. Like I said, because they're gonna go for, they're gonna bank on the IP. It's the same thing with like anything based on IP. You know, like how many shitty Batman games were there before the Arkham series? You know what I mean? How many crappy, like, Marvel... Most of them were, like, very mediocre to crappy, except uh, uh, after Batman Batman on NES. Like, Batman on NES is awesome. That's a great game. But, like, after that, it was, like, garbage, hot garbage for a long time. Batman and Robin. The Adventures of Batman and Robin on Sega Genesis was good. But, I mean, that's just the way it is. It's, like, uh, same thing with... uh, 
Marvel games. Like, there's some really good ones, but there's some really terrible ones. And some are just crash grabs. Like, that Marvel Puzzle Quest or whatever the fuck it is, it's like, cool, do you want to play Candy Crush, but they're superheroes? That's what the fuck it is. What is this on? It's a phone game, man. But, you know, any phone game's a fucking cash grab, pretty much. Yeah. But... I was playing a card game. Marvel Snap. card game? Yeah, Marvel Snap. Yeah. It's okay. It's, a, it it's no Pokemon. <laughs> it's no Pokemon. It's no Pokemon. My son's getting into Pokemon. Is he? Yeah, cards. Collecting Pokemon. cards. Yeah. He just likes the cards. Like, I don't think he wants to play at all. I think he just likes the characters mm. and likes the designs of the cards and stuff. When's he going to get into the games? Probably never. I don't know. He might. So I got some Switch games you can borrow. He might. He might. Uh, let's see. You didn't play Tears of the Kingdom yet? No. That's the other thing I got to start after I beat Baldur's Gate. You know what? Somebody brought up this up. And Biz might have brought this up. But like, it's seeing like, um, it might be like almost kind of disappointing for some people that are like, really like Breath of the Wild because it's not a huge change from Breath of the Wild. Like, they added stuff, obviously. There's a lot of new elements. But, like, overall, it hasn't changed a whole lot. Did the enemy variety increase? Well, here's the thing. I didn't play a whole lot of Breath of the Wild. So, I don't know. You got the, you got the Bokoblins. You got the Horblins. You got the the Moblins. Mm. You got... Um, Lynels. Lynels. You have the... the uh, what are the, the one-eyed Lynels. guys... Hinox, you got uh, all that shit. All the the flying uh, wiz robes, arrow. What are those called? Arrow, arrow wings, arrow, arrow, arrowcudas, and um, the little bat guys with one eye. Yeah, keys. <laughs> They're all. I mean, all that shit's in there. I think it's all the same enemies. Mm-hmm. He fights Yiga people. And then you have the shit down in the gloom, which they'll be like infected with the gloom, but it's the same character. Lizalfos, you know. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's well, cool. I mean, we had a lot of fun with it, but like, it's like I was talking to you that one day. Like, once they, if they keep doing them this way, they'll really come in and and just keep getting better and better because it's Nintendo. But like, the things I saw that were like problems is like I could tell it was because they're still getting used to creating. An open world style game, like so, certain ways they went about things. It's like a, they could have went about this, like. So you think they'll move on from Ganon from the net in the next one? Like, don't spoil anything, but do you think like, hey, new villain? Do you think they'll ever move on from Ganon? I don't know, dude. I I'm just I want some. I want a lot of things to start moving on from that. Like Ganon's great. Love Ganondorf, but you know it'd be great if he if they don't bring him back for like three to ten games. Well, yeah, like, and then, like, that's what I liked about this uh, TMNT Mutant Mayhem. Superfly was the main bad guy. Yeah. Not Shredder. Finally, a Ninja Turtles movie that Shredder's not the main bad guy. Like, I understand he's their main villain, but every once in a while they can fight somebody else. Yeah. They have other big threats. And, like, I thought it was pretty cool that Superfly was, like, the... That, that movie was entertaining, but t- tell me if you feel this way. That was the shittiest they've ever been in any version of Ninja Turtles. Like their skill? As martial artists. Oh, yeah, but I mean, it's supposed to be very early on. It's like their first no, no. time ever fighting, really. No, I mean, I'm thinking because... Oh, also way, because the way they learned. The way they learned. It's just like kung fu movies and... And ninja movies, yeah. Self-defense videos. <laughs> yeah, but I thought and it was... Splinter didn't even know shit. Yeah, and I thought it was funny that Jackie Chan voiced Splinter, and then they were showing, like, the... Like all these scenes from his old movies and stuff that they were yeah. studying, and I thought it was really cool that his fight when he fights the guards and stuff, yeah, he, it's like a Jackie Chan movie. Like he's yeah. doing the wall runs and doing all the weird shit, and like so it was like cool. But yeah, yeah, definitely because how they taught. Like, wasn't there another version where he like used a book of ninjutsu or something? I don't know. Learn out of. I, the- there's so many different universes now. Like, yeah, I'm mostly familiar with like the original comic, the new comic, the first movies, the 2000 show. Yeah, I guess that's about it. Those, those three, those versions. 
Yeah, I I enjoyed it though. It was good. It was real made. I loved the art style. I thought it was really cool. Like it was like that hand drawn stuff over top. Like how do you feel about Bebop and Rocksteady starting out as animals instead of being like two punk dudes? Yeah, I thought it was okay. I mean, for that it's a different universe. You know yeah. what I mean? Like no, it wasn't bad. Like I thought John Cena was good for what he what voice he did for Rocksteady. Oh yeah, I forgot he was. Rocksteady. I thought it was funny that Mondo fucking, Gecko I enjoyed. Yeah, I thought it was funny too. Did you notice in the the credits? Mm. It's like when it was doing all the names, and then it said, and introducing Paul Rudd as Mondo Gecko. I guess they were just, like, being stupid, like he was not well, not known or something. Yeah. And, like, but uh, I thought it was funny that Ray Filet was, like, singing all the time. <laughs> singing songs all the time. <laughs> no, it was actually, it was a fun movie. It, yeah, it was just cool, too, because they had all those characters. They had Ray Filet, fucking Wingnut. Like yeah, yeah, Mondo I think Gecko. Took, I think it took more of its cues from like the uh, 80, 80s, late eighties, early nineties cartoon yeah. than anything else. Because weren't, if I remember right, weren't most of those weren't most of those characters introduced in that? Well, I think like I can't remember like Wingnut. Be- I think Wingnut was a Bebop and Rocksteady. I don't believe were in the original comic. Probably not. There's like ones that like. That's like that fighting game, that tournament fighters game, like the uh, the Genesis version, especially. It has it did a good like mix of like movie, cartoon, and and comic book characters yeah. all in it. But like so, like I can't remember like Scumbug. I think what was Scumbug from? I feel like that I had an action figure of that. I feel like that was the old cartoon. Yeah, which I know like a but I know like a lot of the characters that were in the comic books. Got pulled up into the cartoon too, so it's like well, yeah, yeah, it's Stock- hard to tell. Remember well, who Stockman was from? Oh yeah, and they whitewashed him. <laughs> yeah, which was they like they he went from being a like black scientist, super scientist to like white Jewish scientist. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> fucking, you know what I really like about that movie? They didn't introduce a shitty version of Casey Jones like they've done in almost every universe since. The uh, 2000s cartoon. Like that. Casey Jones is always like a shitty little kid or something now. Instead of just like some dirt head dude that's like... Yeah, the movie version is my favorite. They did him really well in that. Yeah, I love the movie version. Original movie. Well, all right. Guess we're about to wrap up time. Longest podcast episode we've ever done. It has to be. There's no, no fucking... it's actually shorter than the last one. Are you kidding me? No. How we're gonna be. Like, we're gonna have about like ten minutes that we could have done more. Really? Yeah. You know, if I keep questioning this, uh, I'm gonna be right, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. All right. Till next time. It's good having you, Michael. Yeah. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Would you do that?" <laughs>